Welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today I'm doing this video from my oven and today we're continuing the fresh start series where I imagine that I delete all my settings and I'm starting from scratch with Reaper, redoing all of the settings, preferences, keyboard shortcuts, all that stuff. So today we are looking at configuring some of the plugin folders, the main toolbar, transport shortcuts, mixer shortcuts, and we'll see how much time we have left after that. And so we are back in my clean Reaper install. We've, uh, we're continuing where we left off in the last video. There will be a link below if you missed the previous video. The only thing I've done off camera is install the SWS extension. We're not gonna get too far into that stuff specifically, but there's a few shortcuts that I'd like to use from that. And before we get started, I need to thank our sponsor, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. So first off, we are looking at the VST plugins path, which is under preferences plugins VST. And on a Mac, all these um, default settings here are fine. Don't need to worry about any of these. On a Mac, it's a lot more standardized where plugins are being installed to. It's either going to be in the system drive library audio plugins slash VST or VST3, or it's going to be in the user folder. So in this case, users, reaper blog, library, audio, plugins, VST. So that's all good. And I'll have a screenshot here of what that looks like on Windows. It's much less standardized on Windows. There's the Steinbrick folder, there's C slash VST, VSTs within the program files folder. It's kind of a mess. I've got a bunch of folders and on my own systems, I always remove the 32-bit folders from that search path. I haven't used a 32-bit plugin in probably 10 years, so I don't recommend you do it either. When I'm installing plugin and I have the option of which formats to choose, I almost always do only the VST3 version. If I don't get the option, it's totally fine, but I almost never use audio units or VST uh, when there is the VST3 option. So if we open up the effects chain for the first time, um, there are some things here that work pretty well, but I'm going to configure them um, a little more custom. Categories and a developer list here. There's a few things that I don't really like about this developer list. It could be a very great quick start into getting your folders set up, but I find things like Isotope and Isotope Inc and Native Instruments and Native Instruments GmbH. Sometimes there's the same plugins in both folders. Sometimes it's different versions. Uh, there's AU in this folder and VST in this other folder. They could be a lot better about making sure that the names match, uh, but it's actually pretty quick to fix. So decide on which one you want to keep and you go to rename developer on the one you don't want to keep. And then, so I'll just rename this to isotope and okay. Both folders are merged when you do that. So we'll just repeat that for this other developer. And so for native instruments, there's all of the plugins. So this is really quick to do, but there is a problem sometimes Occasionally you have to use this option, clear cache and rescan VST paths for all plugins. And that will remove any custom stuff that you've done in the effects uh, browser. So the categories or developers list, if you customize those, you'll lose all of that customization. And that was really annoying. For that reason, I tend to just make my own folders. So I'll go to folders, add folder, and then I'll call it um, is isotope make it a smart folder, and again, isotope. And I think I have this right. Just make it VST colon and okay. And now when I select isotope, I only have the VST versions of the isotope plugins. If I go to edit, I could do not AU colon and okay. And so there's VST and VST3 but no AU except for this one AU instrument. So to set this up, I'd have to repeat that for every single developer or every type of um, folder that I would like to have. So I could have um, 
a folder for delay. And I tend to have categories. Um, I'll just put in a little asterisk there. And I could put in anything that has the word delay or echo in the name. And that gets me a whole bunch of effects, but I know it's not all of them. And the downside of using a smart folder for doing that is that you can't add in individual plugins into this list. Like there's no drag and drop support anymore. You'd have to type it in to the smart folder filter. So it's a bit of a compromise. Um, so let's make it not a smart folder and I'll go to the VST3 folder and I'll take this delay. I'll just take a couple kind of at random here. Um, I know I've got a, there's the T-Rex 5 tape echo. I've got Valhalla Upermod and I'll drop that in. And if I check the delay folder, I see those. So there's a bit of work involved to get that all organized. One thing that can help with this to kind of just sort things and organize things automatically is if you're not using audio unit plugins or if plugins are installed in every different type of format, we can go to options and under show and left pane list, we can remove some of the options here. So we can remove LV2. I don't have any installed, but can remove those. I can remove rewire. I could remove the categories and developers list. And if I go to show and effects list, I can exclude different duplicate plugins. So duplicate plugins of different types. And I would probably set show only VST3 if present or only VST2 if present. So that means it will prioritize VST3s. And so audio unit and VST2 will be hidden. If there's no VST3, it will use the VST2. And if there's nothing, then I guess it will show an audio unit. So I'll do that. So we've got to start on getting things organized in the effects browser. This is going to take me a little while. And uh, I don't want to sit here and sweat while we're doing this. Let's move on to the next thing. This main toolbar in Reaper, I don't really use half of the buttons here. I don't use the option for a new project, opening a project, saving a project. I don't use undo and redo here. I'll occasionally use the item properties and I'll occasionally use the metronome here. Um, but there are five buttons here that I can remove. And there's a bunch more that I think would be beneficial to have there. So I'm gonna right click, go to customize toolbar, and let's just remove the ones that I'm not going to use. So I'll just select one and remove. And, and so I've cleaned up that. And if I show what that looks like now, if I hit save, it's gone down to a single line. Let's add in a few more things. You know, maybe um, actually default theme adjuster might be a helpful thing to have in there. In this window, we can press select or select and close. Select will add this to the list. You can see it put it down at the bottom and select and close would add it to the bottom of the list and close this window. The next one I wanna add here is view track recording settings. Mostly I use this for input quantize. There are many other actions for setting input quantize. If I just search for input quantize, you can set it to different um, strengths. You can set it to uh, for all tracks, for just the selected track, for last touched. But if you have that in the toolbar, you'd need another button to actually get to the settings. Because I very occasionally use it, I'm just going to have that one action track recording settings. Save project as is something that I use quite a lot with a keyboard shortcut, but also I'm kind of reminded about it when I see it in the main toolbar. And for me, it's a little bit quicker than going to the menu. So I'm gonna select that one and add that. I also like to render my projects from the main toolbar. So render project to disk. You know, while we're here, I'm just gonna set my my shortcut for this too, Command E, override that. And I will also add that to the project. I also want to see the render queue, open render queue. I think that's the last one I'm gonna add there today. But you get the idea of how you can customize things and you can remove things that you don't use and add things that you do use and, and really customize your workflow for how you like to work. 
So let's get this uh, theme adjuster beside the project settings and do save project as and render and render queue. And the track recording settings I want beside the metronome. And so that's how it looks now. We don't have any icons assigned to those new actions. So we can select it and then we, uh, we can hit icon or just right click on the icon uh, in this preview and search for something relevant. I'm gonna look for theme. I'm gonna use this icon here for adjusting the theme and for saving the project. I'm actually gonna do this as another way. So I'm gonna right click, go to text icon. And for a new name, I'm just going to call it save as. And I'm gonna make it a double width toolbar. I'm gonna to turn off use this tooltip. So this option here, this uses your new name as the tooltip when you hover over. Um, if you have that off, then it will show the original action name. And I think that's helpful. So if we save this, that's how it looks now. So this one button is bigger. This is kind of acting as a divider now as well. So I, I kind of like that. So for render project, let's see what comes up with the word render. There aren't a lot of icons installed by default. You can add in any kind of PNG file in there. Um, we're gonna look for just a folder icon, I think. I'll just use this icon and for track recording settings. I'm just gonna do a short text icon and we'll rename this rec set. No tooltip and okay. There we go. This is a little different than the previous main toolbar that I had set up. I had a button for the record, normal record mode and overdub record mode, but I don't really like having two spaces used up by that basically one function. Um, I can always right click on the transport bar record button and select the time selection auto punch there. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes on art, design, productivity, and more. I actually spend a lot of my free time watching Skillshare classes. There's always new things to watch from productivity classes, drawing classes, video editing, uh, learning how to make better vi YouTube videos. I'm always watching something on Skillshare and often on my iPad because I can watch it in bed. I can download videos and go to the park. It's just awesome. I'm gonna feature two classes that I think you'll enjoy. Basics of Reaper from Brian Knapp. So if you're new to Reaper and you want kind of a quick course, this is only about an hour long and you can get up and running without a lot of the stuff that I go through where you're customizing Reaper for days on end. That's what I like to do, but if you just wanna get started, I think this is a great class. I also wanna feature Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success. This is kind of a behind the scenes look that he's never done before on his YouTube channel of how he makes his videos. There's lots of great tips in here um, about the production process or writing, planning, um, super interesting class, and he is a great presenter. Skillshare has a special promo for this summer. The first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. You get access to every single class, offline access on a mobile device, and it's, yeah, it's, it's just a really wonderful uh, resource to have. So thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thanks to you guys for checking out that sponsor offer and getting yourself hooked up with a free month of Skillshare Premium. I know you like it. Hey, John from the future here, editing this video and I've decided to split this into two parts. It's just way too long the way it is right now. And so the second part of this video, I guess part three of this series will be out tomorrow. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.